live from New Basement City. <laughs> Lynn's sewing room. <laughs> it's Friday night. It's book club. Woo! Yes. Book club. Book club with 50% fewer books than we normally have because we realized we're so good at this. We don't need many books. I, That's I, what I thought. I don't know how you came away from it. I will. No, number one, <laughs> let's be honest. This is in a spreadsheet and I didn't really look at it till a couple days ago. And I went, I don't know if I have any of those kind of books. So Cause you don't I do, was, do the kind of thing. I apparently am not as concerned about precision piecing as I should be. <laughs> and yet I, I teach a beginner's class. So I do teach like, precision peach zine so maybe i should read some of these books we, we know what they say those who can't do so stay away from the spreadsheet yes I, that's what they say <laughs> stay away from the spreadsheet <laughs> i don't know that that's true i while i just representing have what? been i've just you know i've been busy and stuff so Girl, i know we've been, been busy too. crazy we've busy. all been so busy oh, i worked until so... for my day job until eight o'clock last night did you really? And then I was, because my husband worked late. So I was like, ah. And, Might as well. And I didn't, you know, the kids go to their rooms and do homework or compute or, I don't know, set up a drug ring, whatever they're doing up there. <laughs> you know they're not doing I that. I was free. <laughs> you know they're not doing that. Uh, so, wow, three people from Australia on. Hey, awesome. guys. Good morning. Good day. No. No. That's, they would say that. They, they would say, say that. Good day. I, I will not say that because it'll come out. Horribly mangled and probably sounding like an Indian accent. I don't think I sound like not, an Indian. You don't, but I, I so, it's not good. It's not good for you. I, yeah. Okay. I well, I've been there, so that doesn't mean <laughs> Jack, though. I was only in Melbourne for a few weeks. It so was fun. we're doing book club about precision piecing. Yes, precision piecing to be precise. Or like, or just to be a better piecer, a more accurate. It doesn't right. have to be 100%. See, we got a good day. Good day. Lol. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Her. <laughs> anyway, yes, precision piecing. I do this. I think I do this. But I will admit to I am not. I'm not always a concerned with big it. pinner. <gasps> not either. I okay. And I think to be really good at precision piecing, like pinning is part of the process. Yes. I also hate pinning. I get around my distaste for pinning by pressing seams to one side and nesting them so I can tell by feel that yes, there's that they're no space. Right. However, however, that sometimes give you lumpy quilts yeah. where there's a lot of seams folded over. Right. But when I do press open, I find I do need to pin. I don't press open because that could burn my fingers quite easily. But if I press open, then I can use my strip stick thingy. I do have a strip stick. I got a big old four foot one for my birthday. Did you really? Did. It's delightful. I can line up like 13 Hesper triangles at one time. Just go right in and like be crazy. Well, I mean, it's more like six because usually the cat decides to drape herself. Well, over one two. Of them, one yeah. Of and then yeah. play with it. Yeah. Yeah. Just so. like a little tiny arm we're in. We're in my sewing room <laughs> and I had to kick the dogs out because I was afraid that they would be like, hey. You're busy, so I must bug you now to go outside. So yes. I already pre-kicked them out okay. so that we could have this safe space. I pre-kicked myself out. Without Salukis. <laughs> without Salukis. So in exciting news for Precision Piecing, Lynn and I have different books from the same author, which means that this lady is someone you should probably refer to. Right. You can go first. Okay. You have more books. Than yes. You. Oh, but let let me be honest. Let me be honest here. Didn't read it. Never opened it. It's going to make I, a big cracking sound when you open probably, it. Probably that's true. But remember, I'm Crack. visual. I'm <laughs> visual. So I'm looking at some of this stuff for the pictures, and I go, "Oh, okay, that makes sense." And then I, I don't not. And there's God. Please tell me that there are people out there like me that don't like. Like, do you get a book and read it? Front to cover if it's a quilt book? It depends. This is why I don't think I'm good at this. So I do a flip through and see. Month. I think so the, the reason you normally buy quilt books. It's for the pictures. For eye buying. candy pictures mm -hmm. and that you like a pattern. And I have a personal rule. I don't I don't buy a quilt book unless I want to make at least two of the quilts in it. Because to me. Right. Yeah. We've talked you about You could buy that. two patterns yeah. for the cost of right. one book. 
sometimes three, depending on the cost, price of the book and price of the patterns and all that stuff. So, right. Yeah. So I get that. I mean, I get that. So, but anyway, so my first one is, and I'm sorry, we don't have the second camera tonight for a lot of reasons, but it's <laughs> the art of machine piecing by Sally Collins. And it's, truth be told, we've got the studio set up to do a different style of filming. And I'm honest to God, scared to move cameras right now because I won't get them back the right way. And I've got to film tomorrow. And um, so we decided to film in here tonight. That's why. Alternately, we could be at my house with a lot more background noise, two children, three cats and a dog. So we went with her basement. We went with my basement. So, but what I like about this book is the diagrams and the pictures in it. And she's very meticulous. 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 She's got tons of writing in here, which is probably why I haven't read it. But she's she goes very much into how to remove stitches, how to pin how to block it the kind of pins the kind of pins the bias strip techniques no, grid techniques don't use the pins that you inherited uh from grandma eddie when she no, passed away no. because they are some big chunky frog stickers they're nails they're nails you yes. gotta buy like super fine like silk pins or the super fine clover pins like very very fine ones if you really want to be precise particularly because you're pinning when you if you press a seam open, you're pinning the threads right to the threads in the other seam. Right, it's thread to thread, yeah. And if you use too big a pin, you're going to distort your threads, and it's going to cause some puckering. Yes. So, but I mean, she is extremely the precision that she talks about in this book is really. I, so I'm glad I have this as a reference, and I'm actually glad we're talking about it because now I can go, oh, that's why I could never get that to work out right. She's so meticulous. She wrote a second book that I own, <laughs> Mastering Precision Piecing. I See, I'd like to look at that one, too. And this, this is basic. This is for the basic. Yes. Like a churn dash block is in here and, you know, four patch. And, I mean, she starts kind of at the beginning type of blocks. But she does get into the card trick and like some of the more complicated blocks too. Um, um, but most of your beginning blocks are in here. My book. <laughs> That's has not stuff playing. Like this. That's not playing. Bananas. I need to get this. That and book. even better, it includes stuff like how to print, like, or how to cut a border print so the corners match up or at least look attractive. When she, you miter them together. She does Y seams in here. Yes. Which are so, important. Or I'm not Y seams. Um, uh, what's that seam? Um, partial seam? Partial seam. Sorry. Which is really just stop. So before you get to the end. That's true. It's it not is. science. It's really not. But if you've never done one before, though, oh, yeah. they can be intimidating. And I will tell you that there are a lot of blocks like, honestly, this block right here, see that block? I would hand piece that block. You know, because hand piecing is a lot easier than machine piecing is in some blocks. That one? So, yeah. Oh, because of the little set in squares. Yeah, set in squares. It's got craziness. I mean, you could do it, but... I will say, I think the true test of precision piecing is machine piecing a lone star without the quilt smart my <laughs> stuff quilt swords and, and having it lay flat and not and not like, getting the d cup in the point not in getting the, the, in the when the eight pieces come together yeah I did, my first one does have a little bit of yeah a, that's it's not a d quilt. cup it's like a b cup it's like a little yeah. no it's not even a b it's probably an a an a yeah a little bit a lot of fabric a lot of fabric coming in on that point with eight pieces coming in yeah a lot of so sally collins is a gem sally collins like i am glad we're talking about this because this is making me look at this book yes the must-have book to take your quilting to the expert level this is like for professionals yeah well see look she's got the castle wall in here on how to sew it and that's the one where I hand pieced the whole quilt. It's the same block. But she's also got piecing in the center. You had just one piece. Oh, dang. That's so more complicated. Step it up, girlfriend. I know. 
It's <laughs> way more complicated. Well, look at this cute North Carolina lily. We should do a quilt with that. I like the should North we? Carolina lily. Look at that. That's cute. So, I th and, and what she points out is precision piecing happens not just at the sewing machine. It's cutting, it's pressing, pressing. It's, it happens all throughout the sewing and she, And what's good about this book is she tells you which way to press your seams so that they line up the way you're talking about it. So one seam's pressed this way and one seam's pressed this way and then they hit right. Now, the really good thing about your book, it's only $10 on Kindle. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, there's a, so the ones we're talking about tonight are listed in the show notes. And I think this is the first one that's listed. Maybe the Art on of Kindle, PC. that would be good. It's like 10 bucks. That's a good deal. And honestly, like I've gotten to where I'm buying a lot of books on, like, yeah. on if you Kindle can get them or on, whatever. You know, an iPad screen or a bigger tablet screen, like on a phone screen, it's just hard because I'm old. Yeah. That's, like you got to zoom in a lot. I'm older. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there that is um but no you're right and i just like them because i'm not always at home you know what else i sewing. like sewing i'm like about... other places sewing i sew other places i like that you can do the equivalent of control f or command f and search for a keyword so you're like i know somewhere in this book is something about pinning. instead of doing this instead like, of just what rifling. is that where is that <laughs> this goes through a ton of different blogs yeah. she really this is a great book i'm glad i own it now, yay yeah, me the only potentially dodgy thing is when there are pieces to print out like oh a template or an applique shape um i my printer at home is modern enough i can connect it through my mobile phone or any tablet. Oh, an right. And yes, send something an to print that way. So that works for me. You still have to be careful that it's to the right scale and all that. Well, and okay. So I have EQ8, which is where we design most of our quilts. And she uses a spreadsheet sometimes, but I use EQ8. You use graph paper. Now. I know. I use EQ8. And so usually you can find those blocks in their block library and they have different ways to print them out. You can print them out like paper piece mm -hmm. version yeah. or you can print them out template versions um, and you can choose the size. So it'll print out to what size you want. So EQ8 is very helpful in that aspect yeah. of it. So there we go. But apparently so, Sally Collins is the is the woman. Now to who do published this. your book? CNT, um, yeah, CNT, CNT, and they both seem to be. And I don't know when this came out. Well, it's printed like it's eighties, um, or nineties, two thousand one. Two thousand one. Uh -uh. This is seventeen years old. That's mine. I probably didn't buy it then. Mine's two thousand six. Oh, why? Right. And I took a class with a teacher that taught from this book. So we had made um, a feathered star. I wonder if I have that book in there. I don't I'll know. just need to look. I don't know if you took the. I don't think you I took did. The class with I didn't you. take it with you, but I took the class from who you're talking about. Yeah. Her name starts with a W. Mm, no, it started with a D. Okay, maybe I didn't. <laughs> I didn't then. So, Sally Collins. Sally Collins. We literally like her. two thumbs up. We like her. All right. Okay, you go next because mine's a surprise. Okay. So I I do teach a beginner class. And this beginner book is what I teach out of. And it's called You Can Quilt. And it's Building Skills for Beginners. And it's got, I don't know how many blocks in here it has. But it goes through um, paper piecing. Uh, foundation piecing, which is paper piecing, Impros improvisational blocks. It goes through, um, you know, basic blocks, half square triangles, quarter square triangles, flying geese, curve piecing. Basic units. Basic units. And then it does some wonky stuff too. Um, and what I like about this book is it does, it'll give you like three blocks for that basic knowledge. So, for example, just learning how to begin piecing, it gives you, you know, the rail fence block, a nine patch, and a log cabin. And so by the time you're done with those three, you get, you know, learning how to do a quarter inch seam, right? 
Yeah. Um, and then the next chapter, it does half square triangles. So when you do the half square triangles, you're doing the churn dash, you're doing this diamond star, you know, and then you do, I think this Arizona star mm -hmm. block. And so by the time you're done with that, you know how to do half square triangles. Now, what's good about this, this book, and I know this book better just because I teach out of it, is it shows you different ways to make half square triangles. Like... Like for the, you know, cut, cut the square, square, mark the diagonal, so right. on either side. Or use paper or use this. Yeah. And it does come with a, and I don't have it in here, but it does come with a CD with some templates for different things in the book. Um, so it's a great kind of skill builder yeah. chapter by chapter, and which that, is what I like about it. And showing the different ways to do the same block is right. helpful for beginners who don't know what they don't know. And so they can try all of them and be like, oh, totally a paper piecer or, oh, nope. that stinks. I'll never do like, that again. Nope. Close enough is good enough. Yes. As I see happening in the chat. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> But this, I, I I, just, this doesn't go into all the detail that the other Sally Collins book does, but I just think it's a great beginner yeah. book. And, and and if you do all the blocks in here, you get a quilt at the end. Um, it talks about having, you know, doing cornerstones and sashing and binding and, you know, borders. So it really covers the start to finish to the quilt top. Now, the other nice thing is that it's spiral bound and so it lays flat. And if you need to no. scribble notes. No. Oh, you did it? I had it spiral bound. <gasps> spiral bound. I did. Where do you get such a thing done if other people want to, Lynn? Um, you can take it to, um, I think we did this at Off Office Max or um, so some Staples, coffee shops, coffee some shop, someplace like that. And I, because I teach out of this and I want to have it laying flat when I'm teaching so I can talk. And I doesn't. I don't have to worry about it. You know, changing the page on me or whatever. Um, I had it spiral bound. So, and it wasn't expensive. That's I think good. it was like it was less than ten dollars. I want to say it was like seven or six. Yeah. It wasn't expensive. And they, you know, had the little yeah. They got a dealio. The deal, and it <laughs> yeah. It does just like that. <laughs> And yeah, so I had it spiral bound and you can do that too. Like some of your favorite books you can take to those places. And I mean, as long as you own the book now, I'm don't do it to a library book. Just saying. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> now I'm seeing in the chat, people talking about having to fight with blocks that aren't the right size. Yes. We did talk about that. And it was episode 322, 323 of the talk show version of some different ways. And there was another book we recommended for that. Sharon Craig. Oh, setting that's your solutions. Book. Yeah. yeah. That you love. Yeah. So check out it's like in the very last few episodes from season three. In there, we talk about dealing with different size blocks if y'all need some help with that. Right. Uh, and yes, Anitra, it will quilt out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will always quilt does. out. Yes, it always does. It always quilts out. So uh, this one, um, I know you can get this one on Amazon. Yes, there's a link to it in there. Um, and no, okay, but it's published by AQS. Oh. So I don't know how long it's going to be around. Is that may be true. I wonder if they're going to take their backlist of books I don't and know. either release rights back to the authors or make a deal with a big publishing Well, that's going to make me sad because I make the students buy this book. I may have to find another book. Yeah. Or we may have to, to write, write a book. One. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> It's Speaking scary of, that we both did that. We gotta <laughs> we gotta go through the spreadsheet after this wraps, by the way. Oh really? <laughs> we got a little sidetracked in the last couple of weeks with a thing. Mm, spreadsheet. Or a person. We gotta we gotta get back on track. <laughs> I know. Well, I've been doing some stuff today. I did update a couple of things on the spreadsheet. Cool. I have not. So we are like we are like at 30, I'm, I'm off we are the spreadsheet. 33%, I think. I, I gotta saw. add some things. Oh, dang it. But there's, it's like, that means we're not at 30 No, no, I'm going to add them so I can check them off this oh, weekend. Oh, okay, then that, <laughs> that I, the, you can do that. <laughs> Let me tell you where we are on the spreadsheet. I can tell you. Oh, Linda, I'm excited. She's going to go look for my quilt tomorrow with the Grand Rapids. 34% so, on the spreadsheet, by the way. So, Grand so Rapids AQS, true. feeling clammy at the Irish just goes <gasps> hanging right now. That was so cool. Thank you so much for posting that picture. That was awesome. I loved that. And it looked good. And... 
if anyone is in the Virginia Beach area <gasps> at the beginning of October, you're going to have a meetup, aren't you? I'm going to have a meetup Saturday afternoon of the AQS Virginia Beach show. I'm taking a class in the morning. Yay. 830 to 1130. What are you taking? Uh, I'm taking long arm quilting with stencils. You're going to take a long arm quilting class? I've taken them before. Yeah. Look, good thing you're sitting down. You're so shocked. Wow. Well, I, can tra I can translate. She's going to know with how to use my skills. long arm better than me. Well, <laughs> All right. So what else we got? Uh, okay. Books. People will buy our books. We will take you up on that. Oh, good. We'll tell, we'll tell publishers that we've got people we saying got two. that. We've got two books sold. We got sold. Teresa. We gotta, <laughs> we're going to take your name down. Hey, did you guys see where a good friend, the quilt that we got accepted into Houston? Yes. We did with the two other friends, right? And one of those friends is the one who won the Prince Challenge, Cherrywood Challenge. I, I mean, I'm like, dude, I got a quilt with her. That's like impressive. She's she's got real skills. <laughs> she does. She does. She's super down. I saw her quilt and I'm like, well, thank goodness. I saw we did her yesterday. And I was like, gave her a big hug. I, I it's the first time I'd seen her since that was announced. I saw her yesterday. Gave her a huge hug. <gasps> Cherie said she'd buy three books. Oh, Anitra said she'd buy more than two. I assume they're talking about buying books of ours. Oh, okay. <laughs> and not just books. I'm assuming. I just buy. Books. We're gonna take this down. We'll send you a bill. <laughs> that we don't have written yet. The book we don't have written yet. No problem. No problem. Wait, I think it's on a spreadsheet, though. It honestly uh, does exist. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> She's like, I, the spreadsheet's up on my you computer that down. you guys can't you see. Scroll down. I just have mine on there, though. I don't have yours. I, well, we'll fix that. No, because I just wanted to see what I was well, I know, responsible for. But whatever you said there is the view that I see when I go look at it, too. That's why when you look at it, it's different, because then I change it. So I can see my stuff. I'm not worried about your to-dos. That's or, what's going on. I'm like, why does this keep changing? Yeah, and I change it back. Because it's not just about you, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> oh, I was changing. I was updating something the other day on Google Drive. And I didn't realize our editor was in there updating it. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And I was like, why is this disappearing? <laughs> Oh, Anitra said more than two people, I think, saw the quilt hanging in Grand Rapids. Oh, that's awesome. That is really cool. Yeah, I think really we, cool. Gretchen posted it. I forget who else. That's the name such is a, and isn't it a so good sorry. quilt? Those of you who saw it, isn't it beautiful? It's it's really nice. I needed to use wool batting. It's got a crease in it. Uh, you oh. learn wool batting. It's the key. I know. I got to go dig some out to use for a different quilt. Okay. Go again. Okay. Save in mind for the end. This is all about quilting from A to Z. And it's also by CNT Publishing. And this is a good, another good basic book. And it was published in 2000. 2002. So it's a little bit newer than the other one. But again, it kind of, I, it goes through all the types of quilting, crazy quilting. Oh. So if you have a question, you know, oh. it talks about batting, and I've tested batting. Like it how to tell if it's how, synthetic. Well, or... and what it does, and it gives you different looks, how the test, oh. you know. That's pretty um, handy. It's got, you know, color wheel kind of questions. It's got orphan blocks and projects you can do with that. It's got block mock-up and different blocks in here. Um, but it's more of a, like an overall resource more than just precision piecing yeah that's part of it yeah it's an overall like Ooh. how to load a long arm how to do basting how to make a label how to thread a quilter's knot to make a quilter's knot to tie a quilter's knot well yeah a tie a okay. we said thread i was like thread a needle thread a needle make a quilter's knot I go buy that clover thingy that does insurance it for me I'm internet now. hanging methods hand quilting Paper, pattern. paper patterns, better foundation piecing, free motion quilting, design problem solving. And I believe it's this a good is overall book. Still in print. There's a link to it for Amazon. I did find it easily. Yeah, it's a good book. I have used it for, you know, just like overall type questions. I haven't read it again because I look at pictures. I'll tell you what, how a book sells for me. Is there pictures? All right. Um, I'm, I'm not the only visual person out there. And yet you've read Gone with the Wind. There's no pictures in that one. 
I did. I read that in like seventh grade too. Like I read that forever ago. I read all the Lord of the Rings and all the, I mean, I read a lot, but quilts are very visual to me. So these are reference books. <laughs> yep. All right. What's your okay, my surprise, surprise book that you forgot to put in the list? I did forget to put it in the list. I will add it after this. Okay. You can add my other one after this too. I'll bet though, this one you can't find anywhere. Intentional piecing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're like, what even is that? What is that? that How is... is it not intentional? When I put it under the needle, I intend to sew it. From fussy cutting to foundation piecing. So oh. this book talks a lot about how to try out fabrics. Oh. Like if you're doing like selective paper piecing, cutting, selective cutting, fussy cutting. Different, make, how to measure it, which is the worst part of paper piecing, because inevitably I try to cut corners and I end up literally cutting a corner off. <laughs> That's how Oops. that name came about. <laughs> there you go. BT Dubs. BT Dubs. Um, but it's got like there's an I Spy pattern that is a bit of precision piecing element in there. Um, and I I did not buy this quilt. It was gifted to me by uh, my stylist at Stitch Fix, <laughs> who are like. We looked at your YouTube show and we think you're neat. We bought you a quilt book. <laughs> so shout out to Stitch Fix. <laughs> Who's Stitch Fix? They're the people that like you sign up and they'll send you five items. They will, you have a stylist and you kind of fill out a little survey about like, here's my personality and what I like to wear. And they send you five items and then you kind of get to choose if you like them or they fit or they don't fit and you keep what you want oh, to send Oh yeah, back. that's the place that you've used. Do you yes. like them? Mostly yes. I did. Okay. I had to stop my service for a while because I'm like, I have too many clothes. <laughs> I did need. I needed some fresher pieces for going back in the office. <laughs> um, but this one has all kinds of super cute blocks that are foundation pieced, like the teacher's set and the pencil can, and all kinds of little opportunities for some selective cutting. Um, there is a little tiny cuckoo clock <laughs> block in here. And if you find a little tiny bird fabric, you can stick it in there too. Oh, that's cute. So this one is, just, it's, you know, I got it and I was like, oh, that's cute. That? Um, so I haven't done anything with the patterns in here yet, but I was just flipping through them and it's like, mm, that's how to put together stripes, you know, stuff you can use. That's good. So intentional look piecing. At that. Intentional piecing. Linda's looking for the book right now. It's by Amy Friend. Oh, I know who she is too. She, uh, Lucky Spool Media printed this. That's cool. So, shout out for very in cool intentional piecing. Intentional. Well, I just think that's Ideally a unique name. Precise and intentional. Like, I'm just intentional every time I sew. Sometimes I am not. Like, I'm going to sew some things. I hope they stick together <laughs> and don't disintegrate when I watch it. I am sure that's not true. Okay, so this is my last book. And it is Complete Guide to Needlework. And again, it's a reference book more than precision piecing because it includes all kinds of stuff. I have but the equivalent This is at the home. Reader's Digest. You guys, I, my mother used to get Reader's Digest. I think my version is thinner and taller. It's like this size, but hardback. So and just this thick. is the, the 1979 version. I think they printed different versions of this. I think mine was... 80 something. So, and 89. this one I got is, in high school. What's cool about this is, I mean, if you want to do any kind of needle type of from cross stitch, embroidery, applique, quilting, if you want to how to do a knife edge um, border, if you want to know how to do a um, padded quilting, corded quilting, um, sectional quilting, um, different types of finishes on the quilt. It, it trapunto, it, it's very much the traditional stuff and it covers everything. The graphics are good in this. If you want to learn how to knit, it shows you how to do that. It shows you all the different in different notions that you use for each of the types of stuff. It's just one of those really cool reference books that I have had for a few years. <laughs> Since 
perhaps 79 access <laughs> since 79 probably well my I mom was... used to get reader's digest you yeah, remember too. Yeah. Oh, yeah we get the condensed the version and then you'd be kind of magazine you only read like i just flipped through two the chapters funny stuff. i always read the funny stuff yeah uh, and then i sent in some things they never took them oh i was really nice. looking forward to my 200 dollars. yeah i know it. i remember that it was this very <laughs> but you can want to hear this. you want to hear the story that i submitted <laughs> yes yes we got time. We got Tell time. We got, we're out Tell of books. We got time. We got plenty of time. You guys uh, better ask us questions <laughs> while she tells the story. Because <laughs> right now we got time. Uh, so we, uh, I think we we went to church when I was little. And then we kind of fell out of it for a while. And we went back to it when I was in high school. Uh, and in high school, you just start paying attention to like, what do all the marquee signs outside the churches say? And there's some churches that are like kind of quirky. Kind of funny, funny kind of yeah. quirky with their yeah. stuff. Um, and it was Christmas time. And so there we drove by one and it was just, you know, general Jesus saves. Yes. Like, cool. okay. Yes. Uh, and then <laughs> it was like right next to it. Cause it was like next to, I don't know, some store having a blowout. I don't remember what store. And it was like, and so driving, you just see. Jesus, Jesus saves fifty percent off. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Everyone saves at Christmas. Yeah, there you go. At a sale. At a sale. There it was go. much better written and cohesive. Yes. When I submitted that at fifteen, I hope, or maybe it wasn't. That's why they rejected it. I don't know. But don't anyway, know. it was that kind of like. That's funny. Funny. So this is available on Amazon, but these are this is a used book, so you got to kind of look for it. You yeah. may find it on eBay or. Are you can places. can you find a newer version of it? I don't think so. Huh? I wonder what because I just I have then. did Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Needlework, and it came up 1979. Huh. So maybe they didn't print newer versions. Well, oh, you could try eBay. That's an or Better World Books is another good mm. place. They are. Yeah, wait, this one looks different. Complete Guide to Sewing. Oh, that's sewing. I don't have that one. You don't need that. It's three dollars. I do need it. What are you talking about? Don't anybody else buy it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, all right. What questions do we have? Uh, we don't have a question, but Amy said she drove by a Christmas sign one year that read, "This year, give the gift keeps on giving." A female cat. <laughs> Please spay a neuter. <laughs> they won't have their spay a neuter um, commercial right there. Although, if it's my cat, they'll keep giving you boogers. Ooh. Yes, yeah. that's right. Bless Jed has Jed has a Jed has a little respiratory stuff he's, going on. He sneezes stuff. Poor kid. Let's Poor kid. See. He's a cute cat. There is a tip about purchasing from Amazon US when you're out of the US called uh, go to a play, uh, Tropics Studio. If you shop with PayPal, they have a side hustle called Hop Shop Go, and you can get stuff from Amazon. So that's particular for Australia, but might be helpful for anybody else. Scroll back up to the top here real quick. Okay, so we live in a place in the States. We don't, but our friend can get our delivery from Amazon yeah. on certain things. We're a little too far out from I'm like, the big city. You're kidding me. She goes, no, they drop it within an hour. Yeah. I'm like that's just incredible. I'm like, or I could put on pants and go to the store. Right. So she gets it dropped in an hour, usually. Um so on certain things. There is everything. A, uh, not a question, but more of a hmm. Hmm. What's the hmm? How much time, if any, is saved by some of the less precise precise techniques, and how much more time is spent with blocks not being the right size? Well, if you don't care if your blocks are the right size and the seams don't line up, because you're giving it to just a muggle go on. or your dog, just go on. You don't waste any time. You're just right. like, just huh, go look on. at that. Keep on pressing. I think I think the more you pay attention to cutting. And sewing that quarter inch seam, the less you worry about blocks being the right size. If you're cutting right, pressing and sewing, you know, your blocks are the right size. Um, I just taught half square triangles last night. So I want to ask you this. Now, I know how you do it. You cut a strip of fabric and then you use that. What's the ruler? Easy angle ruler. The easy angle ruler. All right, so the way I taught them, the way the book teaches them is that they, um, so if you're making a three inch finished, three and a half inch unfinished half square triangle, 
the book tells you to cut it three and seven eighths or cut it four inches. I tell them not to cut it three and seven eighths. I have my beginner piecers cut it four inches because I think three and seven eighths, man, that's tough. Even for me, who's pretty accurate at cutting, plus that, again, is it old. just because the lines on that part are smaller and it's harder to line up? No, what makes well, it hard? yeah, I think that that's part of it, and I think that people, um, you know, don't cut precisely sometimes, and it's just easier to give yourself that quarter, you know, the eighth of an inch to cut it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but I hate trimming to me, that's an extra step. That if I sew it, if I cut it and press it or cuss it bleh, yeah cut it cut it sew it and press it accurately mm -hmm. then i don't need to trim true i'd rather trim because then i know it's right i got time for that because if you don't do any of those other things accurate completely accurately it's wrong hmm. so but on the other i'm hand, making it up at care. the <laughs> end i'm making it up at the end that it's going to be the right size because I'm retrimming it. Even We've if it's had going, this conversation. Geez, even if it's we going completely to a baby disagree. or it's going to a muggle. Okay, or... but I don't do a lot of those. Yeah, but I do. So that's right. So care. that's why you don't care. Yeah, I don't care. I don't do a good lot enough. Of those. Good enough. <laughs> Y'all, Amy doesn't wear pants. Just putting that out there. Really? There you well, go. real pants. She puts on imaginary pants, like okay. little fake, like one leg. Julie trims. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Anitra's Soul mailman sister, retired. <laughs> I use the same ruler. Sometimes rulers are different by a sliver. That's true because you can sliver those things off too. If you don't cut right. Amy hates trimming. Amy is my people. <laughs> That's all right. Julie's no pants, my people. No trimming. No problem. <laughs> That's our new t-shirt. <laughs> That's I'm not putting that on t-shirt. No, no pants. No trimming. No pants. No trimming. That could no go. pants. No that problem. Could, We'll just skip the no trimming. Yes, because the trimming bar with the no pants could be interpreted a different way. It's going to be um, I'm just super saying, fun in I, the UK. I can't be the only one here. It's going to be super fun that. in the UK when pants is the equivalent of underwear. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Which, uh, commando be, quilting, that could be a thing. That could be a thing. Probably not Watch your pins. <laughs> Someone asked that if we... Oh, that was in our next episode. Somebody asks us that question. Do you sew? Oh, that was topless, though, not yeah. pantless. Topless. I'm like, I don't sew topless. I've never sewn topless. Anyway, we'll let I Pam will... answer that on her own. It's near the end of um, four so, or two. So, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> since we have time. So, what have you been doing since? When's the last time we taught? Oh, you know what? I went to Utah since the last time mm -hmm. we were online with the group of people. So I went to, we'll probably talk about this again, but I went to Utah and I was filmed at the Handy Quilter um, headquarters. <laughs> I was trying to think store didn't sound right. Headquarters. Mm -hmm. And they filmed uh, episodes of Long Arm, the Quilted Show. Quilted, the Long Arm Show. Let me get the name of it right. Sure. And so they filmed Smile me for two I. episodes. <laughs> And um, it went well, except for one part. <laughs> it's that related to the well. TV show that I'm binging. Yes, it is. Shit's Creek. Yes. Okay, so honestly, you guys know, like I have a problem issue. Uh, with so the words, with the, the words, making them, with and the face. You know, she corrects me all the time, which is true. Like It works out great. I love with, correcting people. When the camera is not on, she corrects me. <laughs> so this isn't like new at all. So I think faster than I speak, which is really sad. So I'm thinking ahead or I merge words together that shouldn't be merged together. Or, you know, I'm tired <laughs> or whatever. So Breaking news, say, Jolene's studio is a brawless zone. <laughs> there you go. It's the best chat ever, guys. This is. Okay, carry on. <laughs> best chat. Now back to the show. Now back to the show. <laughs> so anyway, they're filming me, and they do the whole thing, right? And we did the first episode. They didn't. They stopped me once because there was a motorcycle outside, so they had to stop because that made too much noise. Not like our show. Where we're like, just keep going. The lawnmower outside, we don't care. Um, 
So I had to start over there. And then they did, oh, uh, Jody Davis was the host and she coughed for some reason. So she walked off camera at one point. So we had to stop and go back there. And then the very last, it's the end of the day. I've been up for way too long. I've waited for three, two other people to film before me. I'm the last person. Little nervous because everybody knows each other except for me. I don't know any of these people except for a new Jody. And um, so they say, Jody looks at me and she says, so who are you and where can people find you? And I'm like, well, I'm co-host of the Stitch TV show and Pam and I shit together. And I corrected it and said sits together instead of the other word. <laughs> and I didn't break. And I kept just going on. I was like, sits, I mean, sits together or something like that. And honest to God, the guy. Okay, so there's a camera in front of me. There's a camera over here that this guy's standing on a platform because the camera's like shooting over us to look at the needle. And then there's a camera behind my shoulder shooting over me. So, and I can see this guy in my periphery vision and you can see him just doing this. Like when I said that, he was cracking up totally. So after they're done and they cut and they're like, uh, we got to dub that. <laughs> so when you guys watch it, we'll send out the link to this and stuff. But when you watch it, just know that that part is dubbed. <laughs> I really said a bad word. <laughs> just know I do call her from the bathroom a lot, but it's because I'm in there crying <laughs> she does. about a quilt design, not like, because I'm taking know. care of right. metaphorical That business. has never happened. That's never happened. We've never <laughs> done that. I don't know. I think I'm just tired. Yeah. I had, I had gotten maybe three hours of sleep the night before. <laughs> and they made me get up at, well, I had to be there at seven. And I waited around till almost three o'clock. They had to do hair and makeup twice because, um, <laughs> because they did it before lunch and they didn't film me till after lunch and I had to eat lunch. And then they're like, oh, we got to redo your makeup. And I'm like, all right. So they redid the lipstick and stuff. So it was so, much more than I've ever. Two questions. <laughs> double seated out. How off. hard was it to change to a different long arm? Um, they did give me a little training class before, and the only hard part was knowing where the needle up down was so I could pull the bobbin up just because it was different on their handle than it was on my handle. So I had to pay a little bit of attention. But, you know, I think I've sewn on a long arm long enough that I it doesn't yeah. matter which one, you know. And how was your hair? Oh, God. <laughs> So I, I have baby fine straight hair I, and she has like extra thick curly hair. We are complete opposites <laughs> in all things, sincerely. So she does my hair, the lady, and I have a picture of her. She did my hair and she's like, after lunch, she's like, well, let me do your hair again. I'm like, yeah, my hair is kind of the you tried hair. Like you do it and then my hair goes, yeah, you tried. That's well, nice. That's nice. Thanks for trying to put a curl in it. So, like, I just, it doesn't hold a curl ever. So, you know, that's why it's never curled, people. <laughs> it doesn't hold it. I can curl it, and it can be, like, tight curls up here, and by the end of the day, it's all down here. So It's not even, like, it by did, brunch. No, I mean, like, 20 minutes later, it's just bad. It straightens out. And the lady said, she goes, after she finished it the second time, this is a professional makeup artist, you know, who does hair and makeup for these kinds of things. And she goes, yeah, you're right. It doesn't hold a curl. I'm like, mm, yeah. Oh, well. But they told me that I had to be there with no hair. No, I had to have clean hair and which that's kind of normal and no makeup on. I'm like, well, that's Monday because I usually film with no makeup on. <laughs> and they're putting all this makeup on me. I'm like, ooh fancy so she told me i had good skin i liked that part cool yeah so it was fun and we'll give you all the details on it when it comes out um but i don't know when it's coming out yet i think they're gonna start doing stuff in october yeah. and mine won't be the first one It'll be like december -ish, they i thought. think mine will be in december yeah which is good because 
the quilt I showed him was a Merry Christmas quilt. So I think they'll use me for December. I worked. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're going to love those red snappers. I'm telling you, you're going to love them. They're yeah. awesome. Because she used to, to sew on my long arm when I didn't have them. <laughs> I bled a lot. Oh, we both pins. did. Because, like, I use those corsage pins. To... What we call frog stickers. Oh, those are those are. That'll ruin your, day. your whole thing. Okay. I can't wait to see it too. I think it'll. I, I'm probably one of those weird people. I watch myself, so I know a lot of people can't watch themselves or whatever. Do you watch? You watch our videos. I do because I have to do show notes. Yeah. Inevitably, I'm always looking at me like that was a bad hair choice <laughs> or. I, What's up with that fat roll over your bra? You know, I was trained. Well, my college degree is in communication, so we had to watch our speeches all the time. So I watch my, I watch them to see how they turn out. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Quilted the long arm quilt show. Yep, that's it. Uh, okay. So, what is the most challenging quilt block you have made or have avoided making? Um. Probably the most challenging one is a feathered star that I've done. And I took a precision piecing class and that's what we did was the feathered star. Machine piecing feathered star. But I've got a two day class with Karen Stone and we're going to do New York Beauty. And I'm interested. I've never done New York Beauty. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I have to. Do, yeah, I would say. That's a hard one too. Paper though. piecing. I've done New York Beauty because. Because those well, points will yeah, kill you. Yeah. Um, but I've done some pretty intricate foundation piecing. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen my open doors quilt. I think it's on our website. It's it's in our, uh, season one, like early season one episode. Yeah, but we didn't you to... put all the ribbon winning quilts yes. up there? Yeah. If you go to our site and yeah. read something in the About Us, it, it says our quilts and shows, I think. Right. So there's a quilt that I have called Open Doors, and it's a 20-inch Di uh, diameter circle and it's probably got 900 pieces in it so it's pretty intricate and it's a foundation piece so i would say that's probably the most complicated piecing i've done most of mine like that is paper piecing like the car yeah, that i turned foundation. into a pillow for my yeah. mom and then your um harry potter quilt so, yeah some of those blocks were super the easy dragon to... yeah oh the dragon was the worst the dragon, yeah, the dragon was cool though and then you did that dragon i know it's not as complicated as the other one but it's bad enough there's a part in there i had to go color with a marker i didn't tell you about and that may be why there's some sequins up there where i like miscut guys, my fabric and i'm like let's put a sequin on that <laughs> you um, guys have seen that one too I mariner's think. compass yeah because it hung in season two i think yeah mariner's compass uh, i don't think i've ever done a mariner's compass um i did that was the first quote i had hanging in our guild show um, Angela, we have a template that's coming out that is the Drunkard's Path template. And um, I've got a couple of quilts that's curved piecing that's just based off the Drunkard's Path. But the pattern's pretty simple. I mean, it's essentially um, a, what I call a pie piece. And it's a quarter circle. And then an L shape. And... I think Drunkard's Path is pretty easy. It's a it's a simple curve. And what I like about Drunkard's Path is that um, it's such, a, it's one seam and the block's done. Mm -hmm. And you know, quick, if you quick, do quick, some quick, quick. intentional piecing, intentional, you can get a good looking design out of it without just by fabric. Choice. Right. Yeah. And, you can use solids too. I mean, that can be very impactful given the the value difference and the the contrast between the two pieces. Right. But it's a really, especially in that the semicircle part, you can fussy cut some things. Yeah, and it it look really sharp. Yeah, yeah. But I like those. I'm with Brandy. I do. I I have a Judy Niemeyer pattern that I bought, so mm -hmm. I have the foundations. And I haven't done anything with it yet because I told Lynn I want her to help pick out fabric so I don't mess it up. <laughs> I've uh, never uh, bought a Judy Niemeyer pattern. I have appraised a ton of them. I have a gl I have the Glacier Star I have, one. That's a pretty one. I like that one. It's one of my. It's one of my 
I think there's a couple a of them that I'm not as big a fan of. Like I'm not a big fan of the Hosta one. Well, I think, and I think so it's because it. it is because I've seen it so many times with Hosta fabric. Yeah. Like, okay. Um, but I've never bought one of her patterns. They're so expensive. And I guess I just have kind of thought that's a lot of fabric, <laughs> but I already have a lot of fabric. So it's fine. no, no, no. The cost of the pattern's a lot of fabric that oh, I could be buying. True. So I've just never bought one. Yeah, I don't I have, know. I'm not. I have, I think it's like a, it looks like a double wedding ring bed runner, but with like spiky points at the intersections. I, I think the too. reason I haven't bought one is because I took Renee Merrill's class and she taught us how to make our own. And that's what Open Doors is based on is one of her techniques of how to make our own kind of spiral type quilts. And so since I know how to do that, I've not bought somebody else's design because I can design my own. So yeah. that's my, probably my thought process of it. <laughs> I had to really think about it. I agree with Cherie. Yes, I need to keep the orange in check. No, if never I you... keep that. I will not make her. No, I'm actually. <laughs> if you do, I'm going to call the quilt. Lynn made me do it. <laughs> Good. That's good. I blame Lynn. That's gonna actually, be the name of it. actually, I help people pick out color all the time. Like in the last, like in my beginner class, the first night we go through kind of a color and I help them choose fabrics for their quilt. And I don't make anybody use orange. Like I, none of the people now, the one lady has some orange in hers, but it was her choice. She brought the fabric to me. I didn't and then I picked out purple and some other stuff that went with it. But I don't make people use colors they don't like. Because here's the deal. I don't dislike orange. Now. I know. I know. I've come around. But here's the deal. Like, if you are forcing a color palette onto somebody that Ugh. they don't, then they're going to hate the quilt. Yeah. And I want them to love this, this hobby and this, this thing that we do together. And... Like, so I don't want them to hate it, you know, so I'm going to help them pick out that. Yeah, just me. <laughs> no, I want to help them pick out fabric that they're going to love. And I always ask them, are you going to put this in a, a certain room in your house that you want it to match? Are you going to give this to someone that likes a certain color? Are you going, you know, we yeah. kind of talk through those kinds of things so that they're comfortable, you know, and then I'm. If they don't pick out fabric that I think will go together, I kind of steer them in a better way. Yeah. But I let them pick out most of it. And then I tell them how much to, and then I have a list of how much you need of each yeah. one. So that's how I handle that kind of thing. But I don't make people buy orange. They just, their, their quilts aren't as good. And then that's their fault. You know, not mine. I can live with that. I bought a bunch of fabric last night. I shouldn't have, but I did. I bought a ton of fat quarters. I don't know. I just went crazy. I love fat quarters. I don't know. They're addictive little things. My problem with fat quarters. I love them. Is that I like, oh, this is the perfect color. And I cut off the piece I need. And then I fold it back up and st stick it back in there. And then it's time for like a fat quarter swap at Guild. Or, uh, oh, Perfect. I, I can stack all these fat quarters and cut the same amount for the thing. And then I'm like, oh, there's a piece cut off. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it hard making a quilt for someone who likes colors you hate? I have done it twice. I don't think it's hard making a quilt for some of colors I don't care for well, as much. I think because but I, I don't there's not many colors that I hate. There's ones that I'm drawn to, like for me. When I do a mm. quilt purely for me, it's always very it is aggressively cheerful. <laughs> like it is super bright yeah she does with a, some good contrast and like ooh, a white background or or it's just all to, it's all kind of mashed together i do a lot of that i think low yeah, value you do. difference you do i think for me i really I, I think for a long time i didn't care for the color pink and it's because pink looks horrible on me i just look horrible in pink so i'm attracted to much warmer colors um but I've made some pink quilts and, you know, I thought they turned out okay. So it's not my favorite color, yeah. but it sometimes it looks really good. Ah, Sheila clarified. It's not that she hates them, it's that she thinks they're boring. I'm like, yeah, well. It is easier to make quilts about things that you're excited about. True. Yeah. Like either it's the pattern that's cool or. Um, I put an exciting I... back on it. I'm like, well, if they don't like the front, they can turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> I. 
I am really in love with this um, kind of like teal green and weird blues. <laughs> and like, I bought a ton of those last night. <laughs> I'll get them out and show you after this. I wish I had more cadet gray blues. Cadet gray blues. To use hmm. as like a background for something. Hmm. 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 Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Made a bunch of purple quilts and had to take a break. Yeah, I think you can get overdone on a certain color. Yeah, that's true. For a good year and a half, everything I did had brown in it. You guys it made fun of me. I and I was like, I was like, Pammy put brown in everything. Screw you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, she was mad at me. <laughs> she got mad at me. She was like, I don't put brown oh, in everything. I'm Jolene's like, yeah, asking do. if we're going to festival. Yeah, huh? We will be at festival. And okay, so here's our weird schedule at festival. We are going to be setting up a booth and vending. No, but, 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 but wait, wait, wait. That is market. That is not festival. Oh, yeah, but I'm telling you the whole thing. But, we're going to set up a booth and vend at market. There you go. We are going to teach two classes two at schoolhouse. schoolhouse. We are going to teach three, or we're going to three demos at the three festival. demos at the festival in the little. It's sponsored by Connecting Threads. I'm teaching three of those, and then we are going to have a we have a quilt at the festival, and I just volunteered today. <laughs> Um, to make a 12 inch by 12 inch quilt art quilt that will hang in um, the cosplay. So, so much cosplay. So much cosplay. Cheryl dude. Sloboda. Yeah, Cheryl Sloboda. <laughs> Which I, I, I was just it educating her how to pronounce yeah. it earlier. So, we so we have got and and potential appearance at, at a booth. Um, just want a quilt. Yeah. Just want a quilt. We're probably going to do a show up at that booth. And we might just do a general meetup on Friday. Oh, and my interview with just want a quilt podcast is coming out on Monday cool. is what Elizabeth said. So we'll let people know. Um, so needless to say, <laughs> we'll be there. We'll publish like a schedule where to find yeah, us. Where I find us. Schedule. That'll come out closer to time. Yeah. Um, okay. So Angela wants to know from me when I find time to quilt since I work full time. She does it every day. Um, she probably does it more than I do. I make time in the evenings. So there are, so I work full day. I make dinner because to me, that's a priority for our family to get together and sit because otherwise I won't see my children. <laughs> like, cause they're 12 and 14 now. So they're, yeah, they're doing homework, doing whatever they're doing. Um, but if we have dinner together, like we're all face to face. So that's a priority to me. Mm -hmm. um, after dinner, I pretty much just leave the dishes wherever they are of like, good luck with that husband. <laughs> Now, sometimes I'll go back and do them later, but That's so from about 630, like my kids are finishing homework or maybe we're watching TV or something and I can start puttering around in the sewing room. I don't always, because like, honestly, at the end of a work day full time, I'm, my brain's tired and I just don't, I don't want to think about stuff. So I will do something mindless like, oh, I know I have 330 half square triangles to stitch together. <laughs> she made me sew them the other night. I helped her sew yeah. those. So my time's usually in the evening. When my kids were littler, it was after they went to bed. And they, I mean, we're pretty good about enforcing bedtime. Even now we tell them lights out 9, 9.30. Um, and so there's, you know, about an hour, hour and a half in there that I can usually sew each night. Sometimes it's more, just depends. Like tonight, if I weren't here, I would be sewing or whatever. And, and typically on weekends too, because um, my kids are pretty good at entertaining themselves now. Yeah, we'll like pick an activity of like, all right, we're all going to get together and do this thing. Like it's go to lunch or it's take the dog to the park or, you know, but then the rest of the time they're doing their thing. So I'm free to go putter in the sewing room. So mostly evenings. Um, I do my exercise in the morning. She's um, a morning person. I'm a night owl. Yeah, I I tend to get up. I'm trying to get consistently up at six o'clock. Dear God, that morning. only comes once a day. And it's not in the morning. And I added weights to my <gasps> workout really? routine. So my armpits are super sore this week. <laughs> I'm going to pump you up. All right. We got one minute. Oh, Cheryl's wow. Awesome. Are you yes. kidding? It's only one minute. Uh, fusible grit. So yeah, Cheryl Sloboda has a bunch of products like LED lights for quilts and that kind of cool oh, stuff. Oh, and she's sending me glitter and something else to use in this the art quilt. of the craft world. No, it's glitter fabric or glitter something that she sells. Wait, I'll tell you. It's Power Shine Foil and... 
power shine glitter and I have to use it in the art quilt. And she gave us all these like names of comic book, like pow, bam, you know, and my word is whoosh. I think it's funny. <laughs> glitter is the devil. All righty. You guys really are all early. All right, but I don't even go to bed till 2 a.m. So this is, I'm the night owl. So Cheers. I don't, I don't even like to start in my sewing room until after lunch. And then I'm done. Whereas like at 10 p.m. I'm dead. Mm, I'm, I'm like, still no. down here at 10. Yeah. Okay. So good. Well, we're going to meet Jolene at festival. <gasps> Yay. Jolene, we'll look forward to that. So we'll give you the schedule so we can meet up and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. and that'll okay. be fun. Uh, so one last question from Linda, and then we'll wrap it up because we're at time. So uh, what do we think of Mil Mil Milifiori quilts? I think they're stunning. They are stunning. I do not yet have the courage to do one. I could do it. I can do English paper piece thing, but I was like, ooh, that's a lot of planning. I am taking um, machine paper, English paper piecing class. By machine. Yeah, by so machine. I. And you don't take your machine. With I Karen don't, Stone. That's, I don't know how to do this. So that's why I'm um, taking the class, I'm, Lynn. I, I know. So I'm kind of excited to learn how to do that. So we'll see. Cool. But I think the Millefiori quilts are stunning. They, they are. are just stunning. Cool. All right. Well, we are going to wrap it up. Thank you for joining us for a uh, half book club, half just gal chat. Yeah. <laughs> Talking <laughs> about stuff. So uh, next week, next week's fifth Friday. So there's no talk show episode. We got to think of something fun to put up. Okay. We'll think of something fun to put up because we're going to go over the spreadsheet and I'm sure that'll get put on it. Yeah. And we'll put something up. Something, something fun, fun on next Friday. Yeah. All righty. So thanks, everyone. We'll talk Bye. to you later.